a new district attorney in Manhattan. Um, in Manhattan, the district attorneys are not appointed. They are elected. I think this is true in all over, New all over New York. So in the borough of Manhattan, there is a new district attorney who was elected this last election by the name of Alvin Bragg. And Alvin Bragg, who is a Democrat, progressive Democrat, is making changes to what crimes he will prosecute and what punishments he will seek out for those crimes. And this is truly uh, bizarre, what he is advocating for. But it, and on the other hand, it is now consistent with the progressive agenda um, to be uh, permissive and uh, uh, sympathetic to the criminals. Uh, Wolf's Den, thank you. Really appreciate the support. So let's take a few examples. Now, uh, on the one hand, one of the things he's going to do is there's a bunch of crimes he's not even going to prosecute. Now, some of these I give him a thumbs up on. You know, a lot of, a lot of possession, um, a lot of uh, uh, drug selling, victimless crimes, uh, certainly prostitution. Uh, he says he's not going to prosecute, and I'm all, I'm all for that. Don't prosecute them. But he's also not going to prosecute a lot of property crimes. And in the case, a lot of uh, kind of unarmed property crimes, minor, quote, minor property crimes, are not going to be prosecuted. Or if they are prosecuted, you know, they're basically going to get fines and slap on the wrists and warnings, but... Nothing serious is going to happen to anybody. But more than that, Bragg doesn't like the idea of people going to jail. This is the district attorney of the borough of Manhattan, Manhattan, New York, doesn't like the idea of people going to jail. So he is going to limit Right? He, he's the one who makes recommendations to a judge on what, you know, what, the, what the penalty should be. Uh, the district attorney uh, have in, in, in Manhattan have been told that they cannot ask for jail time for such insignificant crimes like armed robbery if there is reason to believe that the robber while pointing a gun to your head didn't really intend to pull the trigger. He was just using it for theatrical effect. Come on, people. I mean, really? Pull a trigger? Arm gun? I mean, after all, these are progressives and leftists who believe that guns don't kill people. People kill people. Oh, wait, no, that's not them. That's conservatives. No, these are progressives who believe that all guns kill people. I don't, I, there's a contradiction in the progressive agenda somewhere. No, but this is the progressive agenda that believes that criminals are made by the police, that criminals are made by the criminal justice system, that criminals are made by going to jail, criminals are made by prosecutors. So armed robbery is not going to be something you go to jail for. Armed robbery. Burglary, you're not going to jail for burglary. You're not going to go to jail for stealing a car. You're not going to go to jail for theft. All gone. Nothing. Nothing. The only thing you go to jail for, pretty much, I mean, there are two things. One is murder. Murder you go to jail for. Wow. Aren't you relieved? And, you know, things like domestic abuse and maybe one or two other things that involve violence. But pointing a gun at somebody, you can get mugged on the streets of New York. The guy can point a gun at you, can put a knife to your neck. He's not worried. Because even if he gets caught, even if the policeman is right around the corner and is going to catch him, he's not going to be go to jail. Now, I'm not making this up. I, th there's an official memo. You can read the entire memo. I, I, I you know... 
I've got it right here. I, I'm not going to read it to you because it's full of, uh, you, you can't prosecute out of these, you have to prosecute out of these, but m most of that is taking felonies and making them less so that prisoners don't, so that criminals don't go to jail. Now, guess what's going to happen? Violence is going to rise in New York. By the way, one of the things that happened in New York um, in the 1980s and early 1990s that turned the city around, that basically helped reduce crime rates in New York for 26 years, more than 26 years, for almost 30 years straight. I mean, crime in, in 2016, 2017, 2018 was unbelievably low and had gone down dramatically from its heights. It peaked in 1991. And one of the things that it probably caused crime to come down, there are a lot of reasons, but one of them, is this idea of um, the broken window policing. And that is that police should be involved in small level property crimes. That if you stop small level property crimes and you're engaged with the community over the issue of small property crimes, that then means you're going to be even more serious on big level property crimes and more serious on all crimes. And the engagement of police in the community around graffiti, around petty theft, around stealing and burglary and certainly armed robbery, there's good reason to believe, and incarcerating a lot of those people, slowly started to reduce crime in New York City. Crime over the last year or so, two years, has been going up. Suddenly crime since the United, uh, 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 New York did away with bail for many criminals. They did away with bail, so they were immediately released. Crime has been going up significantly. With this, crime has the potential to go through the roof, through the roof in New York. It, it's truly unbelievable what people are thinking, why people don't take their property and their life seriously. And this all comes from the left's agenda that, again, that, you know, it's not the criminal's fault that they're criminal. They're conditioned by society to be criminals. The only way to stop them from being criminals is to change society. The only way to change society is to get rid of things like the police or to, or to mitigate their power, to reduce their, efficiency, their, their, their effectiveness, and get people out of jail. We need to empty the jails out. Now, I'm all for reducing the, num mount, the, the number of people in jail for victimless crimes. Victimless crimes are not crimes, and therefore nobody should go to jail for victimless crimes like selling drugs, possessing drugs, like prostitution. These are laws that should be overturned. They should be, all of those activities should be legalized. And I believe we would live in a much safer, much healthier world. But that's not what they're doing. They're legalizing, in a sense, violent crimes. I'm sorry, but armed robbery is a violent crime. People should go to jail for a long time for that. Most things, anything that involves violence or the threat of violence, jail, without any question. Not in New York City, at least not in Manhattan. I don't know about the other boroughs. What's interesting, and this will be the last point I make on this, what's interesting is that we've got a mayor in New York City who ran and was elected on a platform of being tough on crime, tough on criminals, tough on crime. And at the same time, in, New, in, in one borough in New York, in Manhattan, they elected a crazy leftist who is the opposite of tough on crime. And so it's going to be going to see the tension between the mayor, who to a large extent controls the police, and the district attorney, who controls kind of who to prosecute and how to prosecute and where to put the emphasis, 
in the same region having opposite views about these issues. So I, I think the man of New York is going to be one of the good guys. District Attorney of Manhattan, clearly one of the bad guys. Okay, one last point. <laughs> I knew there was another point I wanted to make. And this relates a little bit to what we talked about before. This is... These kind of things, the Democrats doing these kind of things, the Democrats electing these, these uh, uh, really bad people into office who are going to cause crime rates in New York City to skyrocket, are going to be responsible for the Democrats losing nationwide in election after election. The American people do not want these policies. Maybe Upper West Side and Upper East Side of New York, crazy left, rich, by the way, rich, think this is the right, just, moral thing, these kind of policies. But actual citizens of the United States of America don't want it. They didn't want it in Virginia during the November elections. They voted it down in Minnesota. They voted it down in city after city after city in the United States. This kind of leftist agenda is not something the American people want or vote for. It is a losing strategy for Democrats to affiliate themselves with the worst elements of the left. The better people in the Democratic Party, and I know some of you think there is no such thing, there are no such people, are going to lose big time because of their association with the kind of people like Bragg in, in New York and others where, you know, who have completely given up on any kind of principles of civilization. And you're seeing a real rebellion within Democrats on a local level away from these progressives towards more centrists. Hasn't reached Manhattan yet. It did reach New York because we did get a better person in New York, a more centrist in New York, but hasn't reached Manhattan yet. So yes, this has a lot of impact on electoral, electoral politics. Um, friends of Aristotle writes, in my opinion, the New York prosecutor's choice will make things, it's not a choice, he was elected will make things more dangerous for everyone. The poor, average citizens, criminals, and police. I agree, everybody's gonna be worse off. Well, I don't know about criminals. Criminals might be, quote, better off, but everybody else, anybody good is gonna be worse off. Police are certainly gonna be worse off because what crimes they go after? What's their priorities gonna be? You know, and, and they catch the crooks and then the district attorney lets them go. So yes, this is gonna be bad for poor people, average citizens, uh, minorities, majorities, police, everybody. And, and I'm hesitant to visit New York. If mugging in the streets of New York is not an offense that will put you in jail, do I really wanna walk around in New York at night? I love walking around New York at night for years and years and years. It, it, you know, it was, it was a sign of the progress we've made over the last 20 years, one of the real positive signs over the last 30 years, is the fact that I remember in, in the 1970s, you couldn't walk around at night in New York. Certainly not, you wouldn't walk in Central Park in New York. And then from the late 90s on through the 2000s and teens, you could walk anywhere in New York at night and feel completely safe. And that was one of the real joys in life. Now that seems to have gone. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you 
who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.